You may have already come across questions like this one asking for the charge on an amino acid at a specific pH, given its pKa's. These tend to be tricky, but will be easy after learning a couple things to consider. Feel free to pause it and answer the question on your own first, but I'm going to move on and show you how to make these types of questions simple. Start by imagining the amino acid in a very low pH solution, like pH of zero, a solution saturated with protons. The C terminus stays protonated, the N terminus becomes protonated, obtaining a positive charge, and any acidic groups on side chains either stay protonated, like this one, or become protonated, like several other amino acids. The question stem gave the pKa values for each proton-containing group on the amino acid. The C terminus has a pKa of 1.96, the N terminus has a pKa of 10.7, and the thiol on the side chain has a pKa of 8.33. The pKa is simply the pH at which an acid, or proton-containing group, is deprotonated. So now, imagine the pH of the solution slowly increasing, like in titration. So if the pKa of the C terminus is 1.96, that means when the solution increases in pH, reaching a pH of 1.96, the carboxy terminus will be deprotonated, leaving behind a negative charge on the oxygen. As the pH of the solution continues to increase, reaching a pH equal to the next highest pKa, which is 8.33 on the side chain, that acidic group will be deprotonated at pH of 8.33, leaving behind a negative charge on the sulfur. And as the pH further increases, reaching the next highest pKa, which is 10.7 on the N terminus, the N terminus will be deprotonated at pH of 10.7, and the nitrogen will become zero charge. That's all you really have to consider before answering the question. Whether or not the question stem shows an image of the fully protonated amino acid, it's good to know what parts are protonated on all amino acids as well as their pKa's. But I'll show fully protonated cysteine for this question. So if they're asking for the net charge of cysteine at pH of 6.3, well 6.3 is higher than 1.96, meaning the carboxy terminus was already deprotonated way back when the solution was at a pH of 1.96, so we'll have a negative charge on the oxygen. But the pH of 6.3 is not as high as the second highest pKa of 8.33, which means the side chain will not be deprotonated, nor will the amino terminus because the pH that the question is asking about has not yet reached the pKa of 10.7. So the amino acid stands at having one negative charge and one positive charge, making the answer zero. So now suppose that instead of 6.3, the question asks for the charge of cysteine at pH of 9.2. Well, we already know that 9.2 is higher than the pKa of the carboxy terminus, so that will have been deprotonated at a pH of 1.96, leaving a negative charge on the oxygen. And now, 9.2 is higher than the pKa of the side chain, which means the side chain thiol will have been deprotonated at a pH of 8.3, leaving a negative charge on the sulfur. But 9.2 still is less than the pKa of the amino terminus, which means the amine will still be protonated and positively charged at a pH of only 9.2. So the answer in this case would be negative one, because we have two negative charges plus one positive charge, which gives net negative one charge. You can do it this way for any type of molecule, not just amino acids, so try it out. Did you have trouble remembering which amino acids have more than two acidic hydrogens? Well, these are some of the fundamentals you have to know about amino acids for the MCAT. In the description below this video, there's a link to purchase our ebook, AAs for MCAT everything you need to know about amino acids for the MCAT. We not only show you everything you need to know, there's tons of practice passages and questions and detailed explanations with tips and tricks to help make amino acid questions easier and quicker. And of course, commonly asked questions explained in the simplest ways. Plus, there's tips and tricks for other high yield, high trouble topics on MCAT like HNMR, chromatography, and so much more. It comes with a detailed amino acid chart as well as one you can fill out on your own. Simple as that.